Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's a full house. Woo! Everybody's here. Back. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I'm we here. We have lots of stuff going on today. <laughs> yes. Lots and Greg wasn't planned to be here either. No, I had a, a math uh, board of directors meeting that I was supposed to be here, but we were really efficient and finished all the work last night. So I'm able to be here. So I'm very excited. Because you're mathematicians. <laughs> that's right. We were very yeah. efficient. Well, you that, don't have that, extraneous actually, that's stuff in true. your formulas, so. <laughs> I'm not going to um, run through everybody that's here, but Brian was here first. Hey, Brian. Brian always kind of hangs I out was... with me before we get started. Audrey's here. Uh, Mary Sleppy, see, I am going through it. Stephanie's here. <laughs> hey, Lynette Jester, Donna Gerber, um, Lisa Gervais. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Lisa. Uh, John Tyner, my favorite Irishman this morning. This morning, okay. Oh. Um, <laughs> who else? Uh, Susan Anderson's here. Hillary Gatsby's here. Hello, Wales. Yes. Hey, Caroline Hillary. Vernon, Karen Stewart, Florian Straub, Christine Miller, Mary Sleppy. And we'll have more people wander in as we go. And we always want to welcome the people who are watching this after the fact. Yes. After we've made a mess of everything mm. Wiki Tree for an hour or so. So, yeah. Welcome. I did you okay? So the three of us. Are you a musician at all, Sarah? Do you play mm -hmm. piano? Yes, you do. You are a pianist. Okay, so all four been of us. Been a while, but what's that? <laughs> been a while, but yeah. We all have something in common, and something mm. interesting happened this week. Um, they announced that uh, new DNA analysis analysis discovers mysteries about Beethoven. So. Betsy and I were talking about this before. Being a musician who has studied music theory and I, you know, studied it at university level, I know that you don't have to hear music to be able to compose music. So I always, I always kind of chuckle when I hear things about, oh wow, Beethoven was was deaf, and well, yeah, it's okay, he was deaf, but he was also an extremely accomplished composer. So, yes, he could compose while he was deaf. <laughs> but the interesting thing about this is that our friends over at FTD DNA, Yarn and Paul Meyer, worked on this uh, to extract uh, information from this gentleman's hair and other items. So um, one of the questions that Betsy had for me was, how did they test his hair? Well, before... You couldn't test hair unless it had a follicle on it. And that has changed. Um, there was a Dr. Green or is a Dr. Green who made revolutionary strides for testing regular hair um, without a follicle, which has made big leaps and bounds in being able to identify criminals, especially mm -hmm. based on hairs left at crime scenes. So um, apparently... Beethoven thought that his friends deserved to have a piece of him. So he gifted eight locks or eight hair locks or eight gifts of locks of hair. Whoo, how do you say that? To eight friends. Uh, the gifts were well documented. And this is according to FTDNA's blog. I'm not going to throw the link up because it's really a long link. But mm -hmm. They he gifted all these people the, the provenance or the chain of custody. Provenance is an artistic term, meaning that a piece of art you can tell where it has gone through time and who it belonged to. So there's letters and things to prove it, or in police terms, chain of custody. So they know who had these hair locks and were able to prove based on that information that. All of these hairlocks are supposedly Beethoven's. Well, when they got down to it, there were five of those locks of hair gifts that were actually uh, attributed to a fella who had the origins of um, the Rhine River in present-day North Rhine-Westphalia, Germany. So supposedly that's uh, Mr. Beethoven's hair. So there was other stuff that they used to try and identify him as well. Uh, his uh, haplogroup or the terminal SNP or the SNP that is the current SNP for today for him, if they have more people test, that SNP will probably change. But right now he's I, FT396000. 
which was formed about a thousand years ago. So if we have new testers who also match him, who are also very close matches, that 1,000 years ago is going to jump up to uh, more uh, current times. So that's fun. They also uh, found um, five living descendants that they compared his DNA with, uh, and they were able to determine um, the other de descendants in a better haplotype. <coughs> and they were also determined able to determine his terminal line his terminal line so there's all sorts of really interesting information in this blog over at ftdna what i would do is just type in beethoven what is this one called D new dna analysis under analysis undercovers mysteries around beethoven it also has links out to the study the actual study that was done it gives um, more specific information. So if you're really interested in digging into that, you can check that out. Just just Google uh, Beethoven New DNA Analysis Undercovers Mysteries, and you should be able to find that. So that's fun, having the musicians that we have, all four of us are musicians. Uh, we can do that. Let's see. Uh, wouldn't do that. Not sure. But are we any of us actually related to Beethoven? You know, I, did, I haven't checked. I mean, I could mm. check. But I don't. I'm not going to do that because then I would like expose private stuff on my mm. DNA stuff. So I don't want to do that live. So I'll do that while everybody's looking. I I don't think so. I'm not an I. I'm an uh, RM two six nine. So yeah, we're, we're I'm in a different, completely different area. So are you RM two six nine? Any of you? I am. Okay. I any of you eyes? Your dad an I. Nobody? Okay. And yeah, that's, yeah. So we got a question of the week. There we go. Which really goes right along with today's uh, fun thing about Beethoven is what are your, and I think a just puts this word in there just to, to goat me that she says, what's the, your ethnicity's estimates? It's not about ethnicity. It's about origins. Origins. There's only one company who uses that word. We won't mention which company it is, but ethnicity is not the right word to use. It's the origins. It's where your group of people were as your DNA mutated. Doesn't have anything to do with the amount of melanin in your skin. There you go. Whew. I'm off my soapbox. So we've got lots of lots of great answers. There's 147 answers, and I am not going to go through all of those. Uh, but the very first one up, Tommy Buck, who's usually here in our chat, uh, is throwing his up. And he's showing two different ones, Ancestry and My Heritage, showing that he's got 42.5 uh, on one and 48 for the other. And the, the reason that happens is that different people are in different databases. And so if you test at My Heritage, you're going to have a lot more of the European, Mediterranean, North Africa, Middle Eastern type testing going on in that group. They're based in Israel. Um, if you test at living DNA, you're going to be really immersed in heavy English and Irish and Scottish information. If you're in the U.S., the majority of the U.S. was settled by Northwestern Europeans. So family tree DNA and ancestry are just covered up with people who are from the Americas, um, North America, mainly some South America. There are a lot more uh, South Americans that are testing here lately, <clears throat> but you, you have to, you have to really test at all of the different groups. My suggestion is take all of your tests, take all of your tests over to GEDmatch, then combine them into a super kit. Uh, you have to have a tier one membership to be able to do that. And then do your ethnicity estimates, bogus name, your origins estimates based on that super kit at GEDmatch. And that is going to give you the best idea of, of, of who you really are based on those DNA results. Because you can see there's, there's um, even Tommy Buck has stuff in here that doesn't even show up on the other ones. So you really have to know, you can call it ethnic origins. You can call it. <laughs> You can call it DNA origins. All right. <clears throat> so, and I love it. Robin Lozier says, mine's pretty boring. Mine's boring too. 
Uh, I, Irish, Scottish, Welsh, Scandinavian, Baltic, Middle Eastern. That's not boring. That's not boring. It's not. Sorry, but um, hers is from my heritage, from ancestry, Alexis Nelson. So <clears throat> if you if you go through all 147 of these answers, and if you were to say that all 147 of these answers were a microcosm, a, an equal microcosm of WikiTree, you would say, wow, we're quite Northwest European. But Robin Lozier has some, some fun stuff. That she, there's Mesoamerican and Andean. There's a little Middle Eastern in there. We've got a little bit of everything on WikiTree. <laughs> but um, it's, it's fascinating. Lots of Scandinavian in Denmark. And, and people are saying, there's a really fun answer down here. Let me get to it. Uh, which I really think should be the answer of the week because not because of the answer, but because of all the comments. Here we go. <clears throat> uh, and I don't know who wrote this, but I'm not going to pull it up. RolandGenealogy.com. Ancestry heritage tests are a complete farce. Baskin Senegal, Lynette. That's great. They aren't a farce. It's interesting. It's, it's what I call the lederhosen lasagna effect. Uh, one of the DNA testing companies has commercials that they run where a guy is dancing around in Lederhosen and he thinks he's German and all of a sudden he takes an ancestry DNA test and he finds out that he's actually Italian. But if you think about Italy and the Germanic peoples, there was so much overlap between those two. And I guarantee you that in the northern Alps of Italy, they're wearing Lederhosen and they're still Italian. So you can't really base an identity on something like that. You have to really base your identity on who you are and what happened to your people as they got to where you were. Not, you know, you need to base it on the journey, not so much on what somebody says. So anyway, there we go. So I really like this answer. Uh, in my opinion, ethnicity reports are almost useless. My ethnicity is Scandinavian, UK, Ireland, and Africa. Now, Scandinavian, coming up with a lot of Scandinavian and having UK and Ireland, think about that. Think about the migration patterns. Who invaded the UK and Ireland and Scotland in a big way? The Scandinavians. So having Scandinavian and UK and Ireland makes a lot of sense. Having lederhosen while you're eating lasagna makes a lot of sense to me. So there you go. I'm off my, my thing. But this is great. Um, Edward Bishop, there's a lots of great comments on this uh, for entertainment purposes only. And obviously it's entertained a lot of people because we have 20 million people in 25 million people and 20 million people in the top three databases. So obviously those uh, great commercials are making some headway. So um, there's a lot of great stuff. I'm going to pick this as the best one. Mm -hmm. You guys can send me hate mail letter <laughs> later. It, it's not a complete farce. What it is, is it's shifting sands. Because every time a new piece of information is added to a database, it could change your results. So check your results often. Mm -hmm. Check them often to see what's up. And as soon as I get done having my soapbox, I'm going to jump off. I'm going to go and check and see if my origins have changed. And what was the other thing? I was, I'm also going to see if I'm related to Beethoven. I am. Okay. Over to Greg. Greg. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Wow. Uh, thanks for that, Max. <laughs> okay. So the profiles of the week are, and where to go? Ding. Uh, which Jamestown colonists are you most closely connected to? Let me just zoom in a bit on that. Here we go. Hey, my 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 parents went to because my. My family's from Virginia, and my dad oh. always sends me newsletters about Jamestown and all that. It's really, eh? Mm -hmm. Wow. So please, feel free to jump in here because, um, as I said in the pre-chat with the, <laughs> the people, uh, my lovely co-host. We are Greg's people. Yeah, my people. <laughs> my people. My people. <laughs> that this will be another episode <laughs> of a Canadian learning a new chapter of American history. <laughs> <laughs> um, because... Um, when I first, I think when someone mentioned that the topic this week was going to be the Jamestown 
uh, massacre, I misheard it, or I immediately thought that you meant the Jonestown massacre, which Ooh. is a totally different, totally thing. different thing. Totally different thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and though both of those are are very sad and tragic and stuff. So, um, um, very, very, very interesting. Uh, so this is a totally different thing than I was expecting. Um, Jamestown, as I've learned, uh, is the first was the first permanent colony in North America, um, founded in 1607. Um, so uh, I actually I had to look up a few things. I checked out my connections. So that's one of the things um, from this uh, this uh, first G2G post. One of the things you can do is uh, look at the the Jamestown colonists, and you get the list of them all, and then you can go to your featured connections and see. And I didn't expect to be actually related to any of them, but look at there's uh, about 15 of them. I'm actually, they're either direct ancestors or cousins of mine. So the closest one is actually uh, William Baker. And William Baker and I are fourth cousins, uh, 12 times removed. <laughs> <laughs> um, through my mom's side, my uh, French Canadian side, and again, like many, many Americans that I'm actually related to, they all go through this, this uh, connection right here where Mahitabal Smeed, Abigail, I was um, taken in a, a raid and then raised by an Inv- Indian village, which was on the border of uh, what now um, Canada, U.S., and then became a, became a um, uh, married a Frenchman. And so, and that's... That's that's the, how my French Canadian goes back to American roots uh, quite often. That's a pretty Canadian. interesting story too. It is, yeah. You should yeah, write a um, publish a paper on that. <laughs> I think lots of people have about that particular raid. <laughs> so, so, but that's interesting. Um, anyway, so let's move on to the very first one. Um, the feature profile is Christopher Newport, um, born on the 29th of December, 1561, in Harch, Essex. England, uh, the son of another Christopher Newport, and he is, uh, he was a captain. Um, he was a, well, and before that, he was an English privateer. So I had to look up uh, what privateer, just to make sure what a privateer, so basically a privateer is just a legal pirate, or a <laughs> pirate who has been given sort of the, um, sort of the the writ to yeah you can go ahead and be a pirate but you're gonna do it uh, on behalf of the country of whatever country here and so basically they hired people who were pirates in times of war to attack the the opposite country so um he was a pirate for england against when they were at war with spain and um so and that's so wow his career started so i thought well that's interesting so you can be a pirate and be sanctioned by the state to do so so interesting then he hooked up with Sir Francis Drake, uh, the famous Sir, Sir Francis Drake, um, was his, the master's mate on his ship. Um, he became a captain in his own right uh, in 1592 to 95 the, of the Golden Dragon, which is a cool name for a ship. Um, was it gold, though? Was his boat gold? What's that? Was his boat gold? Though? Was his gold golden? I don't know. I guess, <laughs> I guess he was a pretty successful privateer, so it could have been. Um, I'd say that that's an aspirational name for a pirate. Yeah, that's probably <laughs> <laughs> good chances if that's the case. Um, uh, he took advantage of the trade on the Barbary Coast, uh, another famous place. Um, the Madre de Dios was a Spanish-Portuguese prize ship that he helped capture. So a prize ship is, so when they capture a ship, um, they call them prize ships because those, those are your prizes. And usually the privateers have to split split the profits. Like they get half the profits and then they have to share some of that. Um, but uh, anyways, he went on to help out with the establishment of Jamestown. Um, and so he was captain and he arrived at Jamestown in April 1607. So he was one of the, the he was one of the, the, he brought the original colonists with them. Uh, the Susan Constant was the name of the ship, I believe, there, carrying 71 passengers. Um, so the ship, at the uh, I guess it was in, must be in the Wikipedia article that I read up on this. Um, the journey went from December, they left in December of 1606 and didn't arrive till April. So that's a, quite a long journey. Um, 
I noticed in some of the other articles that talks about the journey only taking two two months or so. So obviously there, someone found a shortcut or there are other ways of getting it. Um, anyways, this is a huge, a huge long um, wiki uh, profile with lots of lots of information, detailed nice nice timeline here of the Virginia company and the details of that. And uh, anyways, well done. Little shrine right here of the for the ship set up. He looked like a, a rugged fellow, so people maybe a trustworthy face. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, anyways, he died in 1617, so he actually died before the massacre occurred. Um, and then the next profile is Robert Beheathland. Um, I'm not sure if there's another way of pronouncing that last name, but that's how it looks like to be pronounced uh, son of a Richard Heathland, the Heathland. Um, and he was born, we're not sure exactly when, but he died before 1627. But the, one interesting thing about him is that he is one of only two people of the original settlers, the original first settlers who are known to have U.S. descendants, at least as of, um, let's see. So this was... So it looks like this pa this newspaper article was published in 1962. So I'm that information may have been different. Mags, you're muted, so you're going to say something. I, I was going to say that, that that's a long time ago, and there have been lots of new information now available. You know, thinking yeah. about what was available in 1962. That's true. So it'd be interesting to see, you know, what the the true count is now. But um, interesting that. Uh, uh, so his, uh, he was born in the parish of St. Endelion, a saint I'd never heard of before. Um, gentleman, youngest son of born of a uh, family of four sons. I love this. So he's, he's, thus he stood little chance of inheriting anything. Sometimes the second son was trained in law. Like the first son would obviously inherit everything from the father, you know, lands, titles, and whatnot. The second son was trained in law. The third son might be trained in the clergy or the army or navy, but a fourth son must rely on his wits and find his own calling and training. So like, good luck to you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, his father did invest in the Virginia company. Um, so that's uh, probably how he got connected, but he was only 15 years old when he um, uh, uh, joined the ship that the Christopher Newport was the captain of the Susan Constant. So December, 1606 left. Um, captain Smith became his mentor and upon arrival, the ships anchored in the Broad River. So they arrived in Chesapeake Bay on May 3rd. Um, or they finally, fi yeah, I guess they they hit land in April, but it was uh, May 13th when they um, settled on Chesapeake Bay. In demonstration of the oil, they, they named the river the James River and, of course, then Jamestown. And it looks like that for many settlers didn't have a, a really happy uh, welcome. They died from malaria, starvation, gallows execution or by fit of rage by their fellow settlers that doesn't sound like a happy time yeah. um <laughs> uh 1608 um the, the arrival of the first supply captain ship in newport took a group of 20 men one of them robert behithlin and went to the village of powhatan for a visit and he was actually he accompanied uh this person robert behithlin um uh, accompanied uh, Captain Smith on a number of the of the trips, and that is highlighted throughout the uh, throughout the profile here. It also says he was an ancient planter, and I thought, wow, that's interesting. That means he was really old when he started, you know, planting crops in his field. But no, what that actually means, the ancient planter is um, was a designation given to those who um, emigrated to the calling the colony of Virginia and it, they had to stay at least three years. And once they were there for three years, then they became part of this uh, group, the ancient planters. Mm -hmm. And then they were given um, a land grant. So um, there you go. So if you ever come across someone who says they were an ancient planter, well, that, that's... that's a high price to pay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. You might, you know, you might buy, die by gallows or one of your neighbors going crazy and attacking you. But, you know, if you last three years, you get some land. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, he died also in, uh, he died in 1627. 
um, and had been his widow, married a lieutenant after that. So there we go. But uh, apparently he left some he left some descendants. So there we go. Moving on, we have uh, Bartholomew Gosnold, who was born about 1571 in Grundisburg, Suffolk, England. Uh, son of Anthony Gosnold and Dorothy Bacon. Uh, and he died uh, 1607 at the about the age of 36. So he may, may have been one of the first to pass away because um, that's just after they landed in Jamestown. Um, his father had been, a, had been an advisor to Lady Dorothy Stafford, who was a friend to the Queen and mother of Sir Edward Gath uh, Stafford. He was one of the founders and responsible. He was responsible. So the, his claim to fame, he named Cape Cod and Martha's Vineyard. So now there's some conflicting information in the profile here. So here it says that he named Martha's Vineyard after his daughter, Martha. And you can see here that his firstborn was a daughter named Martha. But later on, it suggests he may have named Martha's Vineyard after his mother-in-law. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Or maybe uh, his daughter was named after his mother-in-law. Yeah, maybe. And yeah. Yeah. It's more likely he named it after his, his daughter. His daughter was named by his, by his wife after her mother. So, you know, I suppose you could say both are true. Um, anyways, he was second in command in 1592 um, with, uh, for Christopher Newport when they seized the, ves the vessel Madre de Dios that we mentioned earlier on. Earlier on, I guess I should. <laughs> um, and then he arrived in uh, arrived in Jamestown, sixteen oh seven, on the Godspeed. That was the vessel he captained. Um, but he fell ill with the bloody flux and died in the summer. I'm not quite sure what the bloody flux is. But it doesn't sound good. It does not sound good. No. Um, so stay away from that if you are able to. Isn't that, uh, isn't that dysentery? Um, that what sounds like? that sounds right. <laughs> I didn't have time to. Oh, oh, Thomas, Thomas Graves. Graves, this guy here. Okay, sixteen degrees. Yeah, that's actually pretty close. Uh, I wonder how. Let's just check that out. Relationship to me. Nope, not. I meant connection to me, didn't I? Yes, because he's not. Uh, he's not a relative. He's a connection. Oh, it only goes through one. So that means I would be directly related to William Stone, right? Let's see if I click on William Stone here and go to Stone's relationship to me. My great, great, my 11th great grand nephew, or I'm, I'm, I'm William's 11th great grand nephew. So, so Thomas's daughter married my 11th great great grand uncle. Right? And Aaron, okay, thanks Aaron for the confirmation. <laughs> that, that bloody flux is dysentery. Okay. Thomas Graves though, uh, born April Fool's Day, 1580. Um, son of James Grave um, and uh he was christened on March 22nd at St. Botolf. Again, another saint. I don't know where they're coming up with these saints that I've never heard of before. Has anyone else heard of a St. Botolf before? No, no. <laughs> um, he was unmarried when he arrived in Virginia in 1608. Um, but he, uh, no wife, was, but he, he may have married in England, um, but it's in 1610, so he went back back and forth um uh but he was there let me think i think he was uh 50 acres assigned for each per trans transported uh came that they came after 1616 so his family arrived after 1616 uh apparently he contributed 25 pounds sterling to the virginia virginia company for its expenses that was nice of him and he's a qualifying ancestor of the Jamestown, Jamestown Society. Hmm. Um, he became act, so active in affairs and he was obviously educated and uh, some social status. Um, 
and then they referred to him as a captain, but there's no designation in the chapter of how he got this captainship. Um, uh, he was he was one who took 100 men with him into the wilds and formed a settlement called the Smythes Hundred. Um, and that was on the north shore of the James River. And he became the command of that. And uh, he was living at the time of the Jamestown muster. He was living at the eastern shore. I, I have a question for Nancy sure. Wilson. <clears throat> she says she had a descendant born in Jamestown. So wouldn't that mean that she, their parents would also be her ancestors? You would think, yeah, you would think so. I think that newspaper article was referring to maybe the very first 75 people. The, gotcha. The, who uh, came off the original yeah. settlers, like the very, I think that's what that referred to. Yeah, because there was a ship that got shipwrecked on Bermuda and then came in a few years, mm -hmm. you know, after they were able to get themselves over right. there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then we oh, have. Oh, wait, wait. Patron oh, oh. saint of boundaries, traveling farmers for the last saint you asked about. Really? Wow. No. There that's we go. Cool. So Aaron is taking on the role of fat check fat checker today. That's excellent. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, okay, so here we have Anne, excuse me, Anne Burroughs or Burris, uh, daughter of Anthony Burroughs and Elizabeth Eden, born about 1594. Um, oh, there's some disproven, disputed, and competing theories about this person's parents. Okay, so we'll have to check uh -oh. that out. So maybe. <laughs> not the daughter of Anthony Burroughs and Elizabeth Eden. We'll see. Um, but she has the, uh, um, the distinction of being the first unmarried woman to arrive in the Jamestown colony Ooh. and the first English woman to be married in Virginia. Her daughter's name, Virginia, was the first child born in Virginia. Really I mean, original. <laughs> So if we we're playing the yes, English... Virginia, there is a Virginia. <laughs> yes, Virginia, there is. That's right. Um, there we go. I wonder how common that Virginia was as a girl's name prior well, to the colony. Well, I think it's because of this was the time when. Oh, wait a second. This is Jamestown. No, James the first was the son of no. Not the son of Elizabeth was was did not have children. Right. So, is this the before or after the reign of Elizabeth the first, who was the Virgin Queen? That's why they named it Virginia, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yes. This would have been after, right? I think so. Okay. Oh, we need our fact checker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where's James? Oh, yeah, because James was through Mary Queen of Scots, right? Because he was originally yes. James the First of Scotland and then James the Sixth of England. Uh, Elizabeth I reigned 1558 to 1603. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then James is the dual Scot English English Scottish, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, correct. Okay. Okay. Anyway, I'm taking us down a rabbit hole. Sorry. Um, that's okay. I, I led you there. I, I opened it up <laughs> for you to jump through. <laughs> uh, anyways, there we go. Um, so, very cool. Uh, first one to be married, first one to have a child. Um, and there we go. Uh, so let's move on to the next. Alice uh, Amal. Um doesn't have a birth date for her. Born about 1601, they're guessing. Um, and she married Richard Long. Um, so she, at age 19, she arrived in America around 1620. So again, so now we're moving to some of the people who weren't there at the very beginning of the colony, um, but a little bit later. Uh, aboard the ship, the London Merchant. And she was one of the, the, I love this. She was one of the virtuous young women who were brought to the colonies as one of the maids of Virginia um, or tobacco wise for the Virginia, Virginia planters. So this is, and I'm glad Chris has arrived in the chat, Chris Ferriolo, because basically this is the same sort of idea as the Fille du Roi mm. uh, in Quebec, where they sent young women over to become, become the, the wives of uh, men who were in the colony to 
boost the colony, I believe. So um, the arrival of her husband is unknown, but likely predated the arrival of, so he was probably already there, just waiting for one of the young maids of Virginia to arrive. Oh, what did you say? Lying um, in wait or, or just waiting? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they don't have that detail here. So. <laughs> but I, when I read that, I thought, ah, not, not a unique idea. Um, been used many times in history, apparently. Like the feet of eye. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so then it go, the profile goes through um, how in the different censuses and land patents and whatnot. Uh, so along with his wife, um, uh, so she, she and her husband and uh, their son did survive the attack. The attack was in 22, I believe, right? Um, was it? Uh, let me just check here. Yeah, 1622. Um, so they survived. They're in 1623. So they report as among the living after the attack. Um, so there you go. Then we have Samuel Mathers, Matthews Jr. And there's a lot of Samuel Matthews in this profile. And I was getting a little confused about which Samuel they were talking about sometimes. Um, but that was me, not the profile writer. So I don't want to cast aspersions there. Um, but uh, he was the son of Samuel Matthews Sr., obviously. Um, and Francis Grenville, or Greville, Greville. Um, uh, disputed wife. Okay. There we go. So that the Sarah was actually a stepmother. Okay, so we have some questions about that. Uh, he was assumed to be born around 1630 at Matthews Manor, later known as Denby in Warwick County, now part of the Newport, Newport? Newport News. Um, and he became, a, um, he, he was a colonist, but he also became and designated as a qualifying ancestor of Jamestown, um, but eventually became the governor he succeeded Edward Diggs as governor of Virginia in 1656. Um, so if he was actually born in 1630, or here it says 1629, and he became governor in 56, that's a very young governor, right? He's only ba basically 26 years old. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty impressive. Um, but uh, in 52, even earlier when he was only 22, he was elected to the House of Burgesses. Um, which gave him the honorary tidy, title of Lieutenant Colonel. Um, and then Lieutenant Colonel Samuel Matthews planted 2,000 acres of land in Richmond County. Wow. That's, That's a, a lot of land. A lot. Yes. That's a lot of land. Um, and then descended to his grandson, Samuel. Another Samuel. Of course, they named him Samuel. <laughs> Who made his will. And then the grandson, Samuel, had another grandson named, guess what? Samuel. <laughs> but, but just think of their YDNA trail. I mean, oh, man. beautiful. Oh, yeah, that's right. So, <laughs> do we have any Y descendants of this, of any Samuel Matthews in the chat? I wonder. <laughs> Leave us a note. Um, uh, anyways, a very nice, nice, nice uh, profile here with lots of details as well. There we go. Moving on to John Smythe uh, or Smith. Um, and Captain John Smythe, Captain Smon Smith, uh, born about the 2nd of January, 1579, in Willoughby, Lincolnshire, England, son of George Smith and Alice Rickard. Uh, and I, I don't see a dispute about his parents, so that's good. So I guess that's solid. We have a baptism record uh, for him at St. Helen's Church. Um, so I guess that solidifies that. But his family were poor tenants who lived on the land owned by Peregrine Bertie, the 13th Baron Willoughby de Arisby. Um, But he was only about 13 years when his, old when his parents died. And uh, in March 1596, he was 17. The note questions the date of his father's will. Um, uh, after, uh, so after his father died, his mother remarried um and the lord he lived on a peregrine birdie looked after the young smith uh then he was knighted for his services to sigismund bathory who was a prince of transylvania that's mm. kind of wild um 
he went to Jamestown uh, in 1607 on the Susan Constant, so uh, the same ship that we talked about there at the very beginning, um, and played an important part in the establishment. He was a leader of the Virginia colony based at Jamestown, um, led the exploration of the rivers, the Virginia and uh, Virginia and the Chesapeake Bay. He was the first English explorer to map the Chesapeake Bay area and New England. Um, when Jamestown was became a permanent settlement, uh, he trained the settlers to farm and to work, thus saving the colony from early devastation. So, I mean, that's huge. That yes. without someone like that sort of leading the way and, and giving people those skills, you know, if they did not grow up on a farm or working. Like as as a poor peasant, uh, he had all those skills that th this gentry would not have had. And um, he publicly stated, so this is a line that I've heard before, um, but uh, publicly stated, he who shall not work shall not eat, um, mm. which uh, might seem a little, uh, a little intense these days. <laughs> but that, that was so real. But in, in, in you know back then, I, I mean, really, when you're starting out a colony, you j everyone has to pitch in and do something. Yep. Um, and there's always something you can do. You know, you may not have the physical strength to be tilling the ground, but uh, anyway. So that was good. His courage and tenacity overcame many adverse situations, um, and strength of character and determination determination overcame problems presented for a number of things. So, uh, very impressive person. All in all, um, one of the things it says uh, in the research notes, uh, mm -hmm. no re record of him being married. He never, he did not marry Pocahontas, despite what, you know, some common misconceptions may be, uh, mine included. I thought that John Smith married Pocahontas, mm -hmm. but I was wrong. Uh, it was Master John Rolfe who did, in fact. But he was, uh, Pocahontas was the one who saved him um, from injury, and then he had to go back to England to fully recover from that. But uh, but they were obviously close um, because later when she she met him in London, because Pocahontas herself did actually move to London at one point, um, she said, "You shall call me child, and I shall call you father." You know, referring to how close they're uh, fond they were of each other. So that's interesting. Wow. Um, so there we go. Um, moving on to Nathaniel Tatum, uh, son of William Tatum and Ellen Kirk. Uh, this is another uh, well-documented profile here and um, talks about his parents, uh, Christian and Holy Trinity, the less church. <laughs> uh, so it makes me wonder, is there a Holy Trinity, the greater church? Maybe. Uh, <laughs> we're the poor Trinity, you know, uh, and they're, they're the high, they're the better Trinity. I don't know. <laughs> um, the family name came from the originally Tatham, meaning from the place. Hmm. Uh, his parents must have died when he was young because he was listed on the Bridewell Royal Hospital records. Um, so he was found running wild in the streets of London and sleeping under stalls. And uh, he was one of many homeless waifs. So he was sent on the ship to Virginia, you know, to get, you know, they're just, they're just waves here in London. Let's give them somewhere to go and, you know, be useful. So he became one of the inhabitants of Virginia, uh, including Nathaniel Tatum. Now, Nathaniel Tatum, I wonder if he went by Nate. So then he could be Natum Tatum. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, apparently he had three brothers on the ship with him. Um, and then, uh, <laughs> so detail, the details here, um, his arrival and whatnot, uh, but a, a year and a half before the Mayfire landed. Uh, then in 1622, uh, the course talks about the Indian attacks and then the one in, uh, Indian who, uh, gave um gave the warning to jamestown so some people in jamestown were saved because of that mm. um and he was listed uh on the shirley 100 uh and then it talks about his marriage and land and viewers of tobacco and then so on so yeah that's a very very comprehensive profile. very comprehensive yeah then we have temperance 
Flowerdew West, son of, or daughter of Anthony Flowerdew and Martha Stanley. <clears throat> what a pretty name. I know, very pretty. She was the wife of the governor, Sir George Yardley, <clears throat> and of the acting governor, Francis West, who um, was related by blood or marriage to several people of significance. But interesting, not much is on record about the lady herself. So, um, in fact, the identity, her identity was uh, for a long time a mystery. Um, so, unlike many women in, uh, in olden times, what the, the records often just um, mention the men's, man's name. So, now this, in this case, we have uh, both parents, but some of the uh, previous profiles we had, they, uh, you'll remember, they just said the, 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 if there was a, a name, it was just the fathers. Uh, of course, all the one I'm clicking yeah. on now have both there. Here's an example, Thomas Gray's son of James Gray's, but the mother wasn't yeah. listed. And in Did fact, I was just doing some Irish research um, and uh, it was a birth certificate in, or baptism in 1815. They named the father and the two sponsors, but they didn't name the mother in the, in the baptismal record. I mean, hello, hello. Yeah. The mother was there. The mother is pretty key yeah, to this event. <laughs> pretty key. And yet she gets no mention. Oh, That's just not fair. Uh, yeah, anyway. Did you say that... Her name was Temperance, is that? Yes. She was the wife of a governor? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I'm a little surprised that that there wouldn't be like a portrait done of her. You know, you she's like first lady of the colony. Yeah. 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 So here they, they now placed her as the daughter of of this of Anthony and Martha, but no baptism record has been found. Her date of birth is unknown. So they don't have those types of documents to, to back it up, but I guess they must have something to have based this on. Um, I suppose if I hover over here, I clicked on that. Oh, Wikipedia. Okay. <laughs> and then a, a book concerning George Yardley and Temperance, a synopsis and review. So this is probably a scholarly um, dissertation about that. So we could go into that. Um, Subsequent events are confused and accounts very relying on guesswork. So, I mean, this is a huge profile, but considering some of this is unknown or uh, this is, uh, it's kind of wild. But um, anyways, it's a good read and uh, nice history. Did and they I, have the, children, the couple? The they, she got, she married multiple times and she, we have three children listed on mm. Wikitree for her. So let's see how deep that goes goes pretty deep mm -hmm. up to 1700s let's see can we get to the 1800s 1800s anyone anyone <laughs> higher lower oh 1808 people born in the 1820 get to 1850 get to 18 the census can we get to the census <laughs> uh wow well she's had lots they've documented lots no, surely not all. None of all of these lines could not have died out. There's got to be children below. Sure. Sure. How, how far along are you, date wise? Now. Uh, yeah. I'm still 1780. Oh. Oh, wait a second. Is there a limit to the number of indentations that the, the descendants chart here shows? I, I think so, probably. So if we went you here, somebody and else, and the there, random, there we go. Ah, so that was the issue. So I, t I just randomly picked one of her descendants mm -hmm. at the end, and then they have descendants that take us down to 1966. Okay. Wow. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Okay, last one. Francis Wyatt, uh, born about 1588 in Kent, um, and he's recorded uh, blah, 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 blah. He, he was the uh, first one to change his name. His name was originally written as W-I-A-T-T, -T, and he re rewrote it as with a Y. I wrote that. I read that somewhere here. Um, son and heir of George Wyatt. Um, married uh, Margaret Sandys. His ancestral line is thought to have ended with his youngest son. Very sad. But perhaps another son. He immigrated to Virginia uh, in 1619, and uh, brought the new constitution with him, and then became the uh, in charge, the first governor of Virginia. Uh, he served his first term as governor of Virginia in 1621 to 26, and then he came back and re was governor again in 1639 to 42. 
and then became unpopular and had to leave and go back home. <laughs> the end. Um, there you go. There's all I've learned about Jamestown. Yes, bravo. <laughs> And re even more impressive, considering that you didn't know that you were going to do the profiles until. No, I started start. reading up it on this morning. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so. Great job. Yeah. I guess it's uh, time for photos. Yay! Yeah. There is, nobody's really added photos at all this month. There's only oh, four. No. Sarah, so. did you see that the photo on the WikiTree homepage has a horse? Mm. Oh, look at that. <laughs> okay, let me share my screen. <laughs> uh, that was a bit of a delayed reaction. <laughs> <laughs> and that wasn't the lag. Yeah, that's the lag. That's funny. Uh, oh, wait a second. Oh, John has no. exciting news. What? Hi. Oh, wow. I Way threw go, that up like 10 minutes ago, people. Well, <laughs> I, I was busy 10 minutes ago, <laughs> down rabbit holes. <laughs> okay, oh. sorry, taking me a minute. I'm wondering how John got one, okay. one feet closer. We have plenty of time. Okay. Yeah. Photos. So this month's theme, March, is sports. Only four photos have been shared on the page, but we can look at the G2G post, too. <clears throat> We have a, like a football team. They're on. Mm -hmm. They're like in a cheerleader, you know, tower. Yeah, that's that reminds me. <laughs> how cheerleaders also. I'm, I'm betting the weight of, of a waiting towers is a lot less than the weight of a football tower. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is sport of waiting. Oh. Was that was that a is that is that actually if you're walking thing? through if you're walking through something that has quite a good current i imagine it could be pretty good yeah. exercise I the sports of children mm. so it's oh, interesting yeah. and we have oh look this is fun yeah water skiing in canada that's in the okanagan isn't it didn't we find, figure that out? Yeah, right? Okanagan mm -hmm. Lake. Yes, that says. Then we have one more photo. Rock climbing. Ooh, cool. That's a new one. But I'm it's sorry, fun. but they're wood climbing, right? <laughs> yeah. With yeah, little rocks out, pointing out. Huh. I like that one. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, look, we got some other ones on the ah. post. So we got. Some fishing with his pipe. Mm -hmm. Did good. Did good there. Well, then we saw this one. Mm -hmm. Oh, this was actually from a postcard collection. Then we have the the water skiing. And oh, look, ice hockey. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's all. That's all I got, guys. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> sports pictures, people. Yeah, you got one more. You got six more days. Uh, because, yeah, I have. It. I have no sports to contribute no. unless I unless no. I <laughs> unless I posted pictures of my kids playing basketball. They were great sports and athletes, but not me. <laughs> I've gotten pictures of skiing. I have a picture of me as a three-year-old skiing. Where is it? I even have it right here. Oh, one second. Wow. <laughs> how dusty it is did you know that lisa said that travel insurance does not include rock climbing ah yeah oh, it's funny how it's blurring it. out the <laughs> oh that's wild that's neat that's a that's a great action shot that's very cool that is me wow. little nag skiing and how old were you three or four wow no, it might have been closer to 66. I have 66 on the date for it. Mm -hmm. So uh -huh. <laughs> I, lo I love your red ski pants. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's a story behind that, too. <laughs> I, uh, I, I got up one morning. I was mad. I was really <laughs> mad. 
my brother got to go to school and I didn't first grade. Oh. And I was mad. And I got up and I put on red socks, red tennis shoes, my red ski pants. Mm. I don't know how I had red underwear, but I put on red underwear and a red shirt. Now, how angry was this little six, six-year-old kid? <laughs> <laughs> I go and I steal my brother's bicycle. And I dry, take it and I go to the end, try to go to the end of our street about a mile and a half away. I'm going to go to a, a drugstore and get a bottle of lotion. I don't know why I needed to go and get this lotion, but I was angry. <laughs> and I got hit by a car. Oh, no. And I, to this day, this morning, I was putting on my clothes and I had... <laughs> I have on black pants and a black shirt and I picked out black underwear and I'm like, Nope, not wearing black underwear. I, can't, <laughs> I, I will not wear all of the same color of everything oh, that's anymore, right. ever. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Wow. That is a story. Yeah. It was those wow. red pants I was wearing. I remember them cutting them off. Oh man. Wow. All right. So Ooh, never moving right man. along. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I have um, several, several things. Um, and Thanks. I think I'm going to start with the most exciting thing, which is the progress of how um, our rockers are getting along. We mm -hmm. have uh, yeah. just until next Friday to help our, our five Rockies. Um, and hmm, I think I'm going to, well, okay. We have increased the five rockers uh, CC7s all together by 1,641 connections wow. added. Wow. So really, really great. Um, and let's see. I remember Erin, Erin, who's in, I saw her in the chat, um, was saying, oh, I just wish I could get over 500. We started the month at 498. Erin is now at 1,154. Way to go, Erin. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, Bart uh, Muller is over 3,000. Uh, we pushed Jill Whitehouse over 1,000. Was That was not true before. Um, Cindy Cooper is now over 2,000. Gail pushed over 1,000. So really, really outstanding work. Um, we are going to do a, um, a wrap-up video um, and, nice. you know, highlight things that happened and, and those of the, the five Rockies that are comfortable coming on, um, you know, we're, the we're five Rockies. Rock <laughs> Rockies. <laughs> on one screen. Maybe you should call them Rockettes. Rock and Rockettes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that was one thing. Now with my, my week on the iPad, I have decided to extend this to two weeks. Yes. To, um, and I, I have one, I, I do confess that when I've been doing um, non-research, non-profile things for Wikitree, I have been using my, my laptop. But anything profile related, um, I have been, oh, mags. <laughs> I pulled out at the end of the live cast last week. I showed Mags and Greg my Bluetooth keyboard, and I said, "Well, we said no. You can't yeah, use said, that. No, they gave me side eye. They said no. <laughs> you may not. <laughs> <laughs> so I have not. The only yeah. I've been doing it all with my fingers. The only problem is now when I do like I'm at work at school and I'm doing things on my laptop, I go, "Wait, it's not working. Yeah, that's right. You get very <laughs> used to the, you know." moving things around. Yeah. But yeah. So far, my observations, and I, if anyone, I asked this in the G2G post, no one replied, but mm -hmm. I'd love to know those of you who do work on the iPad or, or definitely do not work on an iPad, what do you like or what do you not like? Um, I've discovered, I've been using Safari um, and I, I got Sorcerer, which works really, really mm -hmm. well. That helps a lot. Um, and I do everything on Safari. I mean, initially I thought, oh, I'm going to get my, my ancestry app ready and my family search app ready and work with the apps. And that, that really does not work for me. It's much easier to just do everything web-based and go from tab to tab. 
Um, and I'm trying to think if I have any other big thoughts. Um, Greg and I are going to talk about WikiTree Plus. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, I, I feel like it's pretty similar. You, you might have to readjust your habits about how you do things. You know, I, I was very used to control Z on my, mm -hmm. on my laptop. And now I, I have another way to correct my mistakes. So mm -hmm. correct my mistakes. What are those? <laughs> <laughs> Says the queen of typos. <laughs> <laughs> um, so leave those in the comments, your thoughts on iPads. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and then my last thing is talking about the, uh, the new Wikitree profile creation, system, which has been in beta testing for, I don't know, like three months, something, yep, something like, like that. that. And um, it's, now, it's now official. Um, that is the way to, to create your profiles. Um, I, I was part of the beta testing group and um, it's not terrifically dif different. I, I mean, what, Meg, what are we going to do? Do you want me to like put it up on? on sure. Screen? Yeah. Okay. So um, let me get to the right screen. Um, so I went to one of my my profiles needed. Do you want me to quickly? I'll, I'll sort of start the process so okay. we can at least see the interface. So here's one of my profiles that um, needs a father. Mm -hmm. um, is this big enough? Should I? Yeah. Okay, great. I think it's big enough. Okay. So, so yes, create a new profile. And then um, a lot of this looks the same. Um, David, uh, Big Nell, and then um, one thing that's not here is, is um, middle names. Middle name. Yeah, those that's been moved down. Uh, his birth date we know from the 1939 register, February 7th, 1873. Certain, I can't read the hand light writing on his town, but he was born in Gloucestershire. Oh, I just did the wrong. I will. Hmm. 18. There, that's the right date range. Ah, uh -huh, nice. Death, nine, well, you know, with an audience, I got to do it right. Oh, I know. Right. I like that before the locations were after the fact, like you'd put the dates in, but you had to go scroll down to. Yes, that's right. That's I right. like that they're together there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It really, yeah. Uh, that's certain. I, I'm unsure where he died, so I'm going to leave that. And, and um, sex at birth, I think. This this is this was also this was not a was this not in the old system? What's that? The sex, the sex, at, birth? sex at birth, or it was phrased differently, maybe. Oh, it might have been called gender. Yeah, yeah, I believe it was gender. Mm -hmm. Continue, okay, and then. Um, oh, you put your source right there. Put your put your source right there. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm got my sourcer. Boom. Uh, create a source citation. Don't you have, you have to go to view record first? Do it. Do I? Yeah. That's that's okay. where I usually go. Oh, yes. Yes, you're right. You're right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then build a source citation. Then I'm going to come back. I don't think I need. I'll end up getting a double asterisk. So I'm going to get rid of that. Mm -hmm. Um, 1939 register showing date of birth and proceed to create new profile. And wow. here's probably the biggest uh, difference, which is really nice, is wow. that in the old system, um, when you got to that step, it would take you to the profile in view mode. But right. notice that I am still in edit mode. Nice. So I can, I can do other things. You can go and start typing out that biography immediately. Immediately. Yeah, right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I do like that. Yeah. Like so because you know what I always did because yeah. middle name was ne wasn't an option on the other one. Uh -huh. So every profile I always had you know middle name question mark sort of thing. Yeah. And I just click on that link and that got me to 
got me to the profile. Right. And actually, <laughs> I use that as my quick, quick uh, link to get there. Especially actually, since so many of my profiles didn't have middle names anyway. So all I had to do was click the button underneath it saying, well, look, this gentleman has two middle names. Wow. So there we go. I've added a source. And I guess I've added a source. I'll leave it at that. And uh, there he is. So, nice. Yeah. Very cool. So, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Nice. That new stuff, new stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we have some things coming up in the week to come. Let me get myself moved over there. Did you notice the middle name field changes? Ooh. And th those have been changed around so that people can not have to put in a middle name. You can you can put in a middle name if somebody has a middle name in the south of the U.S. All of us have surnames as middle names. Those can be hints for finding information. But if your family doesn't have a middle name, you don't have to enter in anything mm -hmm. now. That's changed. That's a good change. Uh, and Betsy just went over the new system for creating profiles. And if you have any comments or suggestions, you can add your information to that. Uh, WikiTree 6 challenge for 2023 is coming up for the American Historical Society of Germans from Russia. Wow. Can't get any more specific from that. that. <laughs> but, but yeah, and that's going to be interesting because can you imagine doing um, research from that area would be very hard. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be an interesting uh, week coming up. Be fun to watch how that goes. Um, at the Connectathon's coming up April. And what's happening around WikiTree? Thank you so much, Eowyn, for getting this put together. Of course, the Roundup Livecast. We are not at Roots Tech anymore. <laughs> We're not. But we can move on down here. Today's the 25th, and today's Saturday's sourcing sprint. Uh, the weekend chat was Friday, Black Heritage Weekend Sprint. The global tour for the 15 Nations Global Tour mm -hmm. Kenya wrap-up is uh, the 28th. Friday night bingo for the Greeters Project and also for the Adoption Angels Project. One's at 12 p.m., one's at 6 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. You probably need to update that. Mm. That's not uh, that anymore. We got some stuff going on month long. Bio Builders, BGM Profiles, Titanic Passengers, Black Heritage Project, Jetty, Integrators and Sorcerers. As well, we have a social media team. If you'd like to join that, you can join the Ambassadors Project and get that information out for uh, week of Sunday, the 26th. Uh, question of the week is coming up. Oh, I don't know if she's changed it already this morning. Uh, 15 Nations, uh, One Name Tuesday, One Place Wednesday. We've got a project showcase. Don't know what the project is yet. Megs, you're not sharing that screen. Oh, I'm not. Why not? Here you go. There we go. There we go. There we go. The social media from the Ambassadors mm -hmm. Project. Sorry. No problem. Um, thank you very much. What is WikiTree? The Connection Finder. Friday Night Bingo. We've already said there's Greeters and Adoption Angels. And we've got the photos. People, find some sports photos. I shared mine. I <laughs> a little five or four or five year old. It was four or five because those pants were gone <laughs> after age of six so got lots of fun stuff coming up if you have stuff you'd like to add to the counter let Aon know and we love having you around Pip Shepard is not here but I see his name oh. and uh, say, where's Pip? England goes forward one more here you go and then uh, somebody asked for another link so that's it for this week we'll see you next week same time to place. Sarah, we would love to have you. We'd Yay. Love to Great to have you. Get some pictures in. So, Sarah, Sarah, we're going to have to figure out. Sarah's next next week, I'm not going to be here, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's okay. We'll, we'll let you. <laughs> we will see you. See right. you next week. Bye. Thanks, next everyone. Week. Bye.